We are looking today at Tailwind CSS, which became popular the last two years. I will introduce you to the framework, how you can install it, what it can does, what the good parts are, but also what it probably can do better. So Tailwind became popular the last two years. Uh, the sat satisfaction rate uh, amongst developers are, is quite high. It's actually the highest in all the listed um, frameworks here. And as you can see, it's still growing. Um, the interest is also varying significantly. Um, same as the usage. So last year, 2019, actually two years ago, was only 6%. Last year it was already 26% and the awareness level is also rising a lot. Um, if we look at other frameworks, most of them are decreasing. We have also some new ones like Spectrus or Skeleton. So if you want me to review that as well, then please let me know in the comments below. Um, today, as I said, we look at Tailwind CSS and let's jump how you can actually install Tailwind and what it does. So let's jump over to the documentation of Tailwind. And what Tailwind does is it has this utility first approach. And this means it doesn't provide you complete components or anything, um, but it provides you the utilities to build your own components. Um, the advantage here is that you are very flexible in your design, so you can really build everything by yourself. Downside here is you have to build everything by yourself. If you want to build a website very quickly and you probably are not familiar or that good familiar with CSS or anything, I wouldn't recommend actually Tailwind CSS to start with. Um, I rather would recommend something like Bootstrap or Foundation. Um, but uh, if you are if you want to build a website very fast and you are familiar with what CSS, how CSS works, Tailwind is actually the thing you want to go with. Um, it's very lightweight, so it doesn't bring any JS libraries or anything with it, like Bootstrap or Foundation. Um, it only brings pure CSS. So if we head to the documentation, then we can see what um, Tailwind actually provides us. So for example, we have containers, which um, container classes, which wraps our content in a container. We have um, Flexbox in general. So all the Flexbox properties you know of. You can also use grids, box alignments, spacing, size, typographies, backgrounds for attachments, colors, everything you want, you need for borders, effects and filters, tables, but also which I think I like is that they also have stuff for SVGs, um, but also transition and animations, which are pure CSS. So for example, you can do some hover effects um, based on animations. Um, with Tailwind. But let's go to the installation guide and see how we can actually install that. To install Tailwind CSS, we can either type it from the top of our head or we just go simply copy um, from the documentation. Installment, so the capital D stands for development since we only need Tailwind CSS during the development. We can install that as a dev dependency. With it, um, they install auto prefix on post CSS for the build process. We will come back to that a little bit later. Okay, in the next step, we create a new file, which is maybe style CSS. You can call it whatever you want. And of course, we need distribution where we have our index HTML for our website. All right, in here, um, we have to import some Tailwind uh, components. Uh, in here, we just can basically copy the free imports here. 
do that quickly and then we of course also need a build script and for that we go into scripts we call that build and then simply type in tailwind then we need the build command and then we need the input file which we want to build which is uh, source style.css and the output which is dash o in this case will be um, this dash and then also style.css and once we have our script we uh, simply do uh, npm run build css to run our script and then tailwind is actually building so our distance this file should now look like something like this, which should include all the CSS classes from Tailwind. So actually we now can include the our CSS file into our theme. Um, that's actually a style sheet. And then we actually can start building our website. Um, so all we have to do now is to know which classes we want and need to build our components. So to do that, uh, I recommend if you have actually already a design framework or anything, you know how your website should look like, you can actually do some presets in a Tailwind config JS. And for that, um, we go back to the documentation so I can show that to you. Tailwind allows you to create a config JS, which either allows you to override the existing classes in Tailwind or even to extend them. So here's an example of how that file looks like. So we have the theme which has for example those colors and those colors are for example green, light blue and so on. And you just can if you don't agree with the pink Tailwind offers you just can simply override that here. Worth noting here is if you override one item in here you override all of them. So as soon as you touch the colors um, object here, you have to introduce your own colors completely. So if you want to just override the pink or extend a new, to a new pink, uh, you need to use the extend object here. Yeah, to do that, you simply go into your console and type npx tailwind CSS in it. And if you, what's that? If you do that, um, Tailwind creates this config file for you and we can start to override or extend our Tailwind config. But let's first actually create some components and then see how we can override them and what we can do with that. Uh, in this video I won't use this Tailwind config JS. I think it's nothing you need to get started with. Um, you still can use everything by your own. And there's actually another cool feature I want to show, which is the classes itself. But let's first create some components. So we go in and let's create a diff and let's give it a background of gray or let's do it black. And then we also want that that the padding is a four and uh, we want to have it uh, a border which is two rem thick and we want to have the border is solid and then we also want that the border is rounded and what else the text should be large and the text should be white since our background is black and and i guess you see the problem here with tailwind is that since it's the utility approach so you have those small utilities for everything your css classes can get um, very long in your actual html html file so text is white 
and yeah let's just create this component for now and in here we just type in hello world and if we check out that we have a large diff which says hello world which has some 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 py so i have to explain that probably p stands for padding and y is the y axis so it's top and bottom padding uh, and the four means uh, four times a quarter so one rem basically and also tailwind is always calculating with rem here all right um but this doesn't look very nice um so that we have some padding so we go in here and add the class container which tailwind offers you you don't have to use it you can use it and in this case the container is uh, limited to a certain width but as in many frameworks the container also centers all the content and everything which isn't the case here so in here you actually have to do margin x uh, x axis and then auto so margin left and right auto and then if we reload yeah we see that we have now a centered container okay and then the next thing is we want to limit the width um, for this diff here so what we can do is for example with one and a half so you actually have to write it like this i think it's kind of weird to write classes like this um but it's actually possible I have to save and then our diff is only half of the width we also could introduce maybe a diff at the top which we say it should be display flex and it should be um, in the direction of a row and then we could input our diff inside of here and then we would have our diff like that as you might see i want to create there some kind of a button here so what we need for a button to work is actually our borders are not rounded sorry my mistake so rounded um and here you also have different possibilities how it should be rounded so i think rounded lg is quite good we could also make it the pill shape maybe let's do that all right done and then uh, for a good button you also want to have a hover effect so hover should be bg and then we go to white and hover should also ch change the text to black so we invert the button and we see that already here now of course we are missing some padding on the left and right so what we can do we just simply get rid of the y here which will give us the padding on all sides and then we have like that but as you can see like tailwind is really it really doesn't do anything so if i hover this button now um let me zoom in for you if i hover this button you see that my cursor is not changing it actually wants me to mark the text here but since we want to give the user the impression that he can click on that we also need to use cursor and then change it to pointer in here we don't use need to use the hover effect since the cursor will change as soon as it enters the object so it's or the element so it's always a hover effect i guess so now we have our first component which would be a button but yeah that's how you can create your first component with tailwind like as said like this is one of the big downsides uh, of it um with the flexibility you have in tailwind you also have um, a lot of classes to write into your HTML. 
even the year I haven't uh, put it in all the responsiveness. So also responsiveness is not provided with Tailwind. So you have to write like, how should that button look now on a mobile screen? You have to write that. So it, it delivers you the breakpoints. So you could write, um, and also important to note here is that DSS you write here is always mobile first. If you want to change it for a larger screen, you have to type in LG, for example, for large or XL. And so SM starts at 640, MD768, LG, XL and 2XL. And yeah, I said it's always min width, not max width. If you write something, you always write it for the minimum screen here. I said this can get quite big here. Um, what you could do, and this is something which Tailwind does, I guess, pretty good because they are, they are aware of their problem that you have to write a lot of CSS classes for your components and especially if you want to reuse your components or CSS classes you don't want to write them over and over and over again so what you can do is um, you write your own class for example button and in here you have the apply method and then you write your classes you want to apply to in your CSS file and with that, now we have to build the CSS again. There we go. Then we have to write button in here as a class, of course. And then we also have the same classes applied to our button, but we actually have a class which is called button. So you can get rid of your old CSS class mess in your HTML to create your own components in the CSS actually, which is quite neat, but still it doesn't solve the long class math mess here. So you still have to write it, you still have to be able to read it. But yeah, that's the introduction to uh, Tailwind CSS. If you want to see more, like we could build a landing page, a whole landing page, then let me know in the description. I can do an extension version of that even maybe to use the Tailwind config.js and use other components and create our own components. Um, I really like this framework, even if it has the downside of writing a lot of CSS classes and that you have to write everything your own, but it also gives you a lot of opportunities and chances. So yeah, I hope you enjoy um, using Tailwind CSS in your future projects. I as said many times already, uh, I really recommend to test it at least to see if it's the right thing for you. Um, it's probably not the right thing for everyone. And as said, if you want me to have an extensive uh, deep dive in this framework, then please let me know. Um, as you can see in the in this video, it's quite fast to set up and test and use so play around with it and yeah see you in the next one